Hey there, friends and neighbors. Uh, before we get into the lesson, I just wanted to address something that happened on the channel last week. I posted a video of me just playing through an idea of a tomb that I've been working on. And a lot of you commented, said very kind words, which I appreciate very much. Um, but then there were all these replies to your comments uh, from someone claiming to be me, telling you to message them, me, on Telegram, uh, and then send me money through this whatever portal, whatever it is. I'm not on Telegram. I will never be on Telegram. I don't know what Telegram is, but I don't like Telegram already. If you see a comment from me on this channel, the name of the channel will be highlighted. Um, that's how you know it's me. If you don't see that, that highlighted name on this channel, then it's not me. And I suggest that you report those comments immediately. Um, I'm not pleased by this. It made me very angry to see these comments and it made me very angry to know that there were people out there posing as me trying to take advantage of you, my friends and neighbors. That's not cool. That's not cool. Uh, so anyway, this rant is over. Let's get into the lesson. <laughs> Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. Thank you for being here. My name is Rich Brown and today uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pentatonic scale. Reason being, uh, I know I've done a few videos on the pentatonic scale uh, all over this channel. They're everywhere. Have a look. But uh, I feel like those videos kind of jump in at a certain level. And I wanted to go back to the very beginning and just talk about the basics of the pentatonic scale. And what I wanted to do today uh, was talk to the beginners because I realized that this channel is really growing at a fantastic rate. Um, and I'm finding more and more that the majority of my friends and neighbors out there are beginners when it comes to playing this instrument. Now that's not to say that I'm going to neglect the intermediate and uh, advanced players. I've got a lot of stuff coming up for you guys and gals as well. So in this video today, what I really wanted to do was just speak to the beginners and give you all one pentatonic shape that will work for the major scale and the minor scale, major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale. And it's a very simple pattern and hopefully you will have it down in no time and by, the, by next week, you'll be playing the daylights out of the pentatonic scale. All right, so let's get into this. It's a very simple pattern, and it goes like this. First of all, let's just talk about the scale itself. If I'm thinking of the pentatonic scale, uh, then there are specific degrees of the scale that I want to target in order to execute the scale. So if I play a C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are my seven notes of the scale. For the pentatonic scale, I'm playing the root, the second note of the scale, the third note of the scale. I skip the fourth note and go to the fifth note of the scale. And then I play the sixth note of the scale. And those five notes make up the pentatonic scale, the major pentatonic scale. And if you can't remember that, just think of the old Motown classic, My Girl. That guitar line. That's a major pentatonic scale. All right, so those are the, deg those are the degrees of the scale that I'm sort of targeting in order to play the scale. But now what I want to do is I want to show you a specific pattern to get you through the scale that puts the first three notes on the same string. So if I'm playing a C major pentatonic scale, then here's what I do. I start on C at the third fret of the A string. I go to the fifth fret, that's the note D. And then I go to the seventh fret, that's the note E. 
So you can see I'm playing basically like on the first three dots, right? Right there on the fingerboard. Third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, all on the A string. Those are my first three notes of the scale. I complete the scale by playing the fifth and sixth degree of the major scale. So even if you don't know what that means, then check this out. I play third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret on the A string. Then I move down to the D string and I play fifth fret and seventh fret, and that's it. So if I'm thinking of the frets themselves, then it's three, five, seven, five, seven. Very simple. Three, five, seven, five, seven. So play this. Play it backwards, forwards, and really get that pattern under your fingers because no matter where you play this pattern, that's going to be a major pentatonic scale. Now, once you have that pattern under your fingers, let's examine these notes. So what I've got is C, D, E, G, and A. G at the 5th fret of D string, A at the 7th fret of the D string. So I'm ending on that note A, right? But check this out, if I come down that same pattern, but this time go down to the A from that C, so there I'm sort of ending my scale pattern on the fifth fret of the E string, which is A. Well, guess what I've done? I've just played a minor pentatonic scale. Huh? Pretty good, right? So that's just one shape that you can use for both scales, major and minor pentatonic. So that's pretty cool. You can use that one shape for both harmonies. I can get into the whole reasons, uh, the reasoning behind like how the A minor is the relative minor of C major and all that business but that's gonna take a whole bunch of time. That's probably gonna be for another lesson. I really just wanna focus on getting the shape and the sound into your heads and under your fingers. Because once you realize that that shape is a major pentatonic scale, then you can play that shape anywhere. And no matter what note you started on, that's going to be a major pentatonic scale, no matter where you play it, right? first three notes on the same string, and then the, the two notes, the last two notes that you played in that three note pattern can just be copied on the next string down, no matter where you play it. I play three notes, and then the last two notes of those three notes can be played on the same fret, next string down. I hope that makes sense, because that's the shape, right? Now check this out. So I'm playing in C major, right? So I'm playing on the third fret of the A string. Now check this. If I move down to the eighth fret of the E string, that is also a C. But what happens is, when I play that shape, one, two, three, one, two, the next note up, look at that, is gonna be a C, which means I can play the shape again. Now, what that means is that I now have a two octave major pentatonic scale. Right? Does that make sense? All I'm doing is I'm playing the shape twice, starting on this C and then starting again on the octave at the 10th fret of the D string. So there's the shape one time. And that leads me right into the shape one more time on the high octave. So here's a little exercise that I want you to do. Um, it's going to involve connecting those two shapes, right? So what we'll do is we'll play the shape one time, 
starting on C. And then I'm going to move up and play the first three notes again. So here I'm at the fifth fret of the G string, which is the note C, which means I can start the shape again. So I'm going to stop here, right? That note is an E at the ninth fret of the G string. So when I stop there, watch this. I'm playing the shape, and then I'm playing the first three notes of the shape. Now what I'm going to do is when I grab that ninth fret, I'm going to come back and I'm going to play the eighth fret of the E string, which is C. Kind of cool, right? See what's happening there? So I've got the shape, and then the first three notes of the shape starting on the fifth fret of the G string. And then I resolve that by playing the root note at the eighth fret of the E string. What's happening is I'm, I'm playing the shape up to the major third, right? This is the note E, which is the major third of C major. And then when I play the root, I resolve everything. But because I'm playing the root here at the eighth fret of the E string, and that is a C, I can play the shape again. And then it's octave. But check this out. Um, I'm ending on the note A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve this pattern by playing the open A. So now, here's the entire exercise. I'm going to take it real slow and let you see what's happening here. So here's the shape. And then the first three notes of the shape that I resolve to C. And then I play the shape. And then the octave of the shape. exactly how I'm executing the line. I'm, I hope I'm playing it slow enough to that, so that everyone can see. Uh, when I get to the top of that first pattern and end on the E at the ninth fret of the G string, um, I can either play that note with my little finger or my ring finger. That allows me to play the root note, C, at the eighth fret of the E string, either with my first finger or my second finger. So, here I'm going to play that note E with my little finger, and then I'm going to come up with my second finger and play the root note C on the E string. Does that all make sense? I certainly hope it does. Uh, I feel like this is the one thing that I didn't really address in all of my uh, pentatonic um, videos, video lessons. So hopefully that'll clear up a few things for the beginners out there and set you on a path to really get familiar with this sound and this shape. And then you'll also understand how it works over both of these harmonies, the major and its relative minor. In this case, C major to A minor, as we are resolving to both of those harmonies in this little exercise that we've come up with here. Um, so let me know if that all makes sense, because I really want to be able to help everyone, whether you're just starting out with the bass or you're a seasoned professional. Um, 
I want everyone to gain something from this channel and from these lessons. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this lesson, please click the like button to let the YouTubes know that more people need to see this video. Uh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The channel has been growing at a ridiculously amazing rate and I am so thankful for all of you who have joined the channel and I am thankful to all of you who are about to join the channel. What's up? Peace and love. You can donate to the channel in a number of ways. I will leave a link in the description box below that will allow for you to donate whatever amount you see fit. There is also a join button that will allow you to join the channel for five bucks a month, Canadian. Huh? Um, and there's also like a little thank you button underneath this video that will just allow you to donate a couple of bucks. One dollar, two dollars, five bucks, or 20 bucks, whatever, whatever you want to donate. Um, of course, all of the above is greatly appreciated. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I will see you very soon in the next one. My name is Rich Brown. Thanks for visiting me in the Brownstone. Peace and love.